morning, everyone. Good morning. Right. I hope you can hear me. I've got a lot of <laughs> resources here, so just let me know. But I'm so excited to be here with you this morning as women who are 40 and older and just looking for different ways to um, keep our bodies in balance. And that's what the topic will be on my um, presentation today, is how do we use food as medicine? And so specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about the body's natural detoxification system. What are some of the common toxins in our environment? And how do we use different dietary approaches to um, live well? So to start off with, let's talk about what we won't be advocating for today. <laughs> a lot of us have probably seen a lot of different products, supplements, a lot of big promises by some of these different companies around detoxification. So today, it'll be good to really appreciate what our body's natural detoxification process is and how we can use whole foods to accomplish this. So I'm not gonna ask you to starve yourself. I'm not gonna put you on a juice fast. And I'm not going to use any of these um, lemon you know, cures. And really, this stems from a very, um, a kind of a newer approach of looking at health. And this is based on functional medicine. And a lot of times when we come into an office, we have a lot of signs and symptoms, and we're trying to figure out how do I, how do I manage this in all of the different things that are on my plate at home. And the functional approach is really looking at more of what are the underlying systems to all of us living well. There's about seven different key organizing systems that need to be in balance for us to be um, in a state of wellness and we're going to talk about how they actually focus more at the roots of our health care. And so if you're interested, there's these different, different, uh, seven different organizing systems, and detoxification is actually one of them. And so some practitioners are starting to look at, well, how are you living in balance, whether or not you're looking at your muscle and skeletal structure. That's another um, key system is communication. A lot of us don't realize that our body is constantly communicating with itself whether it's going to be the hormones, the neurotransmitters, the gut bacteria actually is exploding in the nutrition world right now and how it's communicating to all different systems of our bodies in our, well, in our well-being. So there's seven different systems and today we're gonna to focus on what's technically known as biotransformation and elimination. I thought detoxification would be a little bit easier to digest. And so when you think about living in balance with these seven different organizing systems, what I like about the functional approach is it goes right down to the roots of our health care. And as you can see, to live well, it's not just what we're eating. Obviously, that's a big part of it. But it's also how we're managing our stress. It's how we're moving our bodies. It's our relationships and our networks. And so it really takes into account all of the different factors that are going to play a role in your well-being. So we're going to just show a short video to kind of give you a little bit more of a background about this approach and how we can really look at nutrition as, and food as medicine. I have some big surprising news for you. Food is not just calories. It's information. Now, we generally think of food as a way to get energy, which we need to feed our bodies and fuel the fuel they need to work properly. But new science has shown that food literally talks to our genes. It contains information that your body receives from the foods you eat, and it turns on or off genes. This gives your body instructions on how to control your metabolism from moment to moment. And and day to day, and every time you take a bite of food, you're talking to your genes. This is the science of nutrigenomics, or how food communicates with your genes. And it's the nutritional approach that is the basis of everything I do, including my books and the blood sugar solution. In fact, Dr. Dean Ornish showed that after just three months on an intensive lifestyle program, including a whole foods, plant-based diet, that over 500 genes that regulate cancer were beneficially affected, either turning off the cancer-causing genes or turning on the cancer-protecting genes. Now, there is no medication that can do that. So remember, with every bite you eat, it's a chance to heal. Your food is medicine. It's not like medicine, it is medicine. 
and what you put on the end of your fork is more powerful than anything you'll ever find at the bottom of a pill bottle. And he referenced Dr. Dean Ornish's program, and that actually has been approved by, by Medicare. And so if you can get something to go through Medicare, you know that there's actually good, solid evidence behind it. And so if you're interested in that, please stop by, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that program afterwards. And so let's, let's think about um, what is the detoxification system of our body? What are we talking about here? What the actual definition of detoxification is actually a biochemical process, and it really entails um, making a fat-soluble compound into something that's water-soluble. Why is this important? Well, because the majority of our bodies are water. And so whenever we're exposed to different toxins in our environment, for us to process that, we have to make these more water-soluble so they can be excreted. When we talk about the detoxification system, at some level, every cell is doing this in just general metabolism, but there are going to be key organs, and that includes the liver, the GI tract, kidneys, our skin, lungs, and the lymphatic system. And we're really going to focus today on the gatekeeper, which is really the liver's role. So we're going to dive into this lovely diagram about what really happens when we're trying to detoxify these toxins that are in our daily environment. There's going to be three key phases, and I'm going to focus specifically first on the first phase. The first phase is really about our bodies becoming like Sherlock Holmes. It has to distinguish what is friendly, what is foe. And so that's really what this first phase of detoxification involves. And it's interesting because now all of us are, I believe, 40 and older, so you should recognize Mr. Yuck, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have those stickers right now for my own children, but... Um, so Mr. Yuck represents all the different toxins that's in our environment. And really, when we think about this phase one, it's using this whole family of enzymes. It's called the P450 um, cytochrome enzymes. And they're actually making the toxins more toxic in the first phase. And so you're going from Mr. Yuck into this lovely little free radical guy that looks a little bit scary. <laughs> And so what we will use is that all of these different steps require nutrients. There are several different nutrients in phase one that your body needs to initially make this toxin recognizable as something that needs to be excreted, and then this first phase of making it a little bit more of like a free radical. Two specific ones that I'm going to focus on are glutathione and the family of bioflavonoids. These are um, going to be um, key because they're antioxidants and they're going to actually help calm this free radical down before he causes any damage in the body. Have you ever heard about inflammation? Well, it's really looking at like free radical damage. Just these, last year when I did a talk on health and well-being, I likened the free radical to an angry toddler. <laughs> kind of let loose in your home and breaking everything and you're trying to calm, calm it down. And so that's really what this free radical is. We're trying to calm him down. So glutathione is a, something that your body will naturally make. It makes it from amino acids. This is why I wouldn't put you necessarily on a juice fast for detoxification because your body actually needs protein. That's where you're going to get amino acids. And the key part of this is that the, the key amino acid in this glutathione molecule is sulfur. And so where are we going to get sulfur in our diet? We're going to get it from the cruciferous vegetables. And so I've got um, the Maple Grove uh, Farmer's Market graciously brought in some beautiful produce. And I also have resource sheets of all of the different um, resources that I'm going to reference today that you can pick up afterwards as well. So it's going to be key. How many of you consistently eat something from the cruciferous family every week? Great. Every day. Wonderful. Even better. Um, one strategy that I do is I buy a head of purple cabbage and I cut it up and I put it in all my salads, trying to add in those kind of sulfur-rich, cruciferous uh, detoxification vegetables. The other nutrients and foods that will bring sulfur into your diet are going to be uh, the garlic, the onions, the leeks, and things along those lines. When you think about um, really maximizing the benefits of garlic, one key point that a lot of people are unfamiliar with is that you actually need to Oops, excuse me. You either need to um, press, slice, or smash your garlic and then let it set for about 10 minutes 
because there's two different phytonutrients that need to cross-react to give it that health-protective effect. And if you heat it right after you press it, you actually negate all of those benefits. So if you love your Italian cooking or you love to make, uh, using a lot of garlic in your household, take 10 extra minutes, let it set before you uh, throw it into the um, oven or into the um, saute pan. Now another classification of um, nutrients that we really want to maximize in our diets to help with this detoxification process is called bioflavonoids. These are nutrients that are found in a wide variety of uh, produce and different plants. And um, when you think about it, um, there's about six main key classifications. One of them is going to be focused on berries. These are rich of something called anthocyanins. So plants have uh, natural phytonutrients, plant nutrients that are very protective when we consume them. And there's over 8,000 plant nutrients that have been identified to date. And uh, the reason why we continue to explore this in the world of nutrition is because plants can't fight or flee. So what they do is they create these different plant nutrients, these phytonutrients, to protect themselves. So it's interesting that even when you pick an apple, if you go out at the apple orchards, my son, you know, my daughter, taking down the apples and enjoying those, the ones that have the light hit um, part of the apple, let's say it's darker red on one side and it's lighter red on the other, there's actually more plant nutrients on the red side because it has to defend itself from the UV light. And so the richer, deeper, darker colors, there's actually more nutrients in those um, items. Berries this time of year, very lovely if we can get them. I'm a big proponent of using frozen so that you don't have to give up um, these wonderful fruits at this time of year. It'd also be a lot more affordable. Green tea, um, this is going to have some plant nutrients called catechins in them, and so it's a good time of year to kind of experiment with different teas to help with this detoxification process. Um, parsley, cilantro, celery. A lot of times when I'm putting parsley as a finishing on some of our dishes, my husband's like, well, why are, we, why are you adding that? I said, well, there's great nutrition in parsley. There's great nutrition <coughs> in cilantro. It actually helps your body detoxify. So why not throw it on? Obviously, um, the vitamin C rich fruits and even some of the beans um, and lentils. The key part of that, even though this is involved in phase one, and it's kind of maneuvering us from um, this toxin into this kind of intermediate metabolite, so it kind of, even though this is a reactive molecule, these nutrients can serve two purposes. They help with this phase one, but they also help to prevent tissue damage because they're also antioxidants. So they're gonna calm down that free radical at the same time as your body gets ready to go into phase two. So phase two is going to pick up where phase one left off. And so hopefully before these free radicals can bounce around and cause any kind of damage in our bodies, we want to link him, calm him down, and uh, make him a little bit more water soluble so that, that these free radicals can be um, excreted. And the, the cells that do this are called Kupfer cells. So these are kind of like the... Um, the garbage men of the liver. <laughs> so they're gonna like clean up the waste, calm down all these toxic um, chemicals. And um, in essence, they use six different ways to link him and calm them down. And so what, there's hundreds and hundreds of different pathways, but these are the main six. And again, you will see it's primarily plant-based produce that's gonna help you, again, detoxify. This is why you really want a varied diet where you're going to include a lot of different sources of color and variety. What were the spices? Oh, the spices. So glutathione, another um, way to upregulate glutathione is cumin. And so and turmeric is also another great one too. And so why does detoxification warrant our attention? Well, a lot of us actually are undernourished even though calorically we may be just fine and taking in calories. Again, food is not just calories. We're really looking at it deeper than that, the nutrition that's within. And just looking at our environment, what are the toxins that we're coming into um, play here? There's actually an acronym for the standard American diet, unfortunately, is SAD. <laughs> and so, 
Um, I think that you know there's been great improvements recently, and I hope that that continues in our homes. Um, but pretty much what this slide is just showing is that with the advent of convenience foods, even though they're definitely convenient for working mothers that come home with hungry children, unfortunately, you know, we've kind of lost some of the nutrition when we rely on prepackaged goods. There's a role for some of them, and I definitely work that in with my clients and I personalize that for them. But any, you, know, you can see 10% of the standard American diet is unrefined plant food. And there's quite a few different photos online looking at what does the standard diets look like around the entire world. And so this is a photo from the United States. And so I would encourage you, if you had to take a picture of what you ate for the entire week, what would your photo look like? How would you begin to shift that? And the reason why is because we have all of these different toxins that we need to um, take into account, and we're constantly barraged by whether it's pollution, exhaust, um, cigarette smoke, if you live with someone who's smoking, if you smoke yourself. Um, we've got great resources here on skin care and body care products, and what we can maybe look at um, that's safer, that doesn't have some of these different um, chemicals in them. We recently determined that BPA was you know, um, something that was not healthy. That came out after my son was an infant, and all of a sudden I started looking at the baby bottles that we had been using, and um, thankfully they weren't the ones with the BPA, but it's interesting when you all of a sudden news flashes come out, you kind of look back at, well, what were we relying on? Stress. Stress is actually going to cause inflammation, and so a lot of different techniques that you can use are some of the mind-body resources, meditation, yoga, we're going to do some movement later today. Um, all of that will be beneficial. And specifically, I'm going to talk about some of the food additives, some of the pesticides, the caffeine, uh, alcohol, and the sugar in our diet. There's actually more than 10,000 additives in our food supply. Some are either directly added um, during the processing or they're indirectly added during packaging, storage, um, and transportation. And another question, this is an interesting one. I actually um, like to hear different practitioners talk about their uh, take on organic versus conventional produce. There's a study that just came out this year by the British Journal of Nutrition that actually was the first time where they showed that organic produce actually had more nutrition than conventionally grown um, items. And so typically, I've heard Dr. Walter Willett speak from Harvard. He's like, the only difference between conventional and organic is just the absence of pesticides, which I think is probably worthwhile. <laughs> but beyond that, this is the first study that's actually suggested that some organic produce will actually have more nutrition. And it's those bioflavonoids that we talked about earlier. And then another big topic that came out earlier this year, how many of you saw the Fed Up movie? One. Well, two of us. And so I really enjoyed this documentary. It's focused on uh, the schools and sugar in our food supply. It does focus a little bit on youth, but if, it really applies to all of us, I believe, in this nation and looking at what exactly is in our food. So I'm going to show you the trailer, and I highly suggest that you either um, pick this up from Netflix. It's on uh, DVD now. And it's very insightful, and there's resources that will go along with it that I'll, I'll touch on at the end of today. Statistic. More blaming willpower, and it's a crime. 
Over 95% of all Americans will be overweight or obese in two decades. We're toast as a country. The sugar industry is extraordinarily powerful. They're in business to make money, not to keep America healthy. What if our whole approach to this epidemic has been dead wrong? The government is subsidizing the obesity epidemic. To place private profit ahead of public health. Systematic political failure. By 2050, one out of every three Americans will have diabetes. Those diseases are being driven by sugar. This is the fundamental problem nobody's talking about in society. We can cure 80% of the problem when they prepare the food in the school. Tomato taste is a vegetable, really? Junk food companies are acting very much like tobacco companies did 30 years ago. And would reject entirely any argument that they are in any way harmful. Lying through their teeth. Kids are being told the biggest lie they will ever hear in their lives. Ronald McDonald never sells to children. He informs and inspires through magic and fun. If a foreign nation were doing that to our children, we would defend our families. Years from now, we're going to say, I can't believe we let them get away with that. We have to change the diet of America. It's all preventable. It's really well worth the rental. <laughs> and so what can we do? So hopefully this morning you have a little bit of an idea of how your body naturally detoxifies. And um, some of the different toxins, you know, ever, everyone is distinct. Everyone is in their own, you know, natural environment. And so we really need to look at how do you personalize this for yourself and for your family. And so I really advocate that when you think about strategies, to think about what's one small thing I can change that I can actually sustain. And so I'm going to introduce a couple different tools that you can access. I have these, again, resource sheets right up here. Um, for you if you like some of these um, apps and websites um, for future reference. And so whether or not you're going to advocate for the Dean Ornish, uh, the Spectrum Diet, whether or not you're going to appeal to the Paleo approach, whether or not you're going to take on the DASH diet, um, whether you're looking at uh, clean eating, there's a lot of different names that we can assign to this uh, process of eating more whole food um, based meals, but you really want to just focus on do they meet all of the different um, key components of this pure sequencing? And how does it really fit for you? So the first step is really to look at your patterns. So when you think about this pure sequencing, this is a kind of an approach that we can use to gently detoxify your environment, your bodies over time and have a very whole foods based approach. And so the first, the P of the pure is pattern recognition. So in your packets, I actually uh, gave you a uh, wellness journal sheet. And as you can see, there's a lot of different areas that you can focus. For some of my clients, the first step is just to look at their overall pattern of how are they eating. How hungry are they getting? How full are they after they eat? So you can use the hunger and fullness scale to starting there. Um, then you can move on to what are you actually eating. Just kind of take a, a snapshot for just even two or three days can show some key patterns. A lot of times when people come in to sit down with me one-on-one, -on -one, they're so close to it that they actually need to kind of step back and see their overall patterns to really um, think about what would be in their best interest to shift first as they're working towards their health goals. I put on here also you can check off how colorful your diet is. So those are all going to be the little acronyms over on um, this right hand side, whether or not you're getting proteins, carbohydrates, fats in your diet. So you can kind of use this however it's going to work best for you. To be perfectly honest, some of my clients that come in with concerns around inflammation, prediabetes, um, they have great nutrition, but what's happening is there's profound stress in their life. And so then sometimes some of the consults, I'm actually advocating for them to try different stress reduction techniques and accessing some of those resources. So again, this journal um, will help you identify all of the different components that are going to support you in your health goals. And then also, um, when you think about this pure sequencing, the U is for undernourishment. So is there something that's missing in your diet? 
is there something that you want to consistently add to boost the color spectrum of what you're eating? So ideally, we would be eating something from all of these six different colors every single day. And ideally, we would work up our general nutritional patterns to a minimum of nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Minimum. <laughs> and that's on a 1,200 calorie diet. <laughs> Most of us are eating more than that. And so a lot of times I encourage people, it can't, you, we have to find a way that you're going to enjoy this. Otherwise, you won't want to do it. And so my children will love to eat just raw cut up vegetables. Great for them. I won't do that. <laughs> I'll, I have to mix it into a salad and then I can add all kinds of variety and color. Some of my clients are tired of eating salads, so then we focus all of their efforts on soups. You know, some of them are looking at uh, smoothies. How can I work in something that's easy, fast? I've got five minutes to, before I walk out the door, and I've got four children and two cats and a dog to take care of. I mean, this can really fit with your lifestyle, so part of it is just to kind of, again, think about what's gonna work best for you, but the concepts, the principles are still the same. How do we get more color, and how do we get more volume? Again, kind of touching base on um, what we talked about earlier, the de detox powerhouses really are gonna be those cruciferous vegetables, uh, the, um, the sulfur-based vegetables like the garlic and the onion and the leeks, and then the citrus fruits. Those are, those are key. We also wanna remember that we need consistent protein. And so, you know, in, in America, most of us get plenty of protein in our diets. Um, it's, the ones that I worry the most about are gonna be women who are eating alone at night and tend towards cereal or crackers. Then sometimes I do find people that are a little bit deficient in protein, but you can do some work on what types of protein are you eating. And so, you know, can we work in more beans and lentils, um, wild caught fish? There's actually really convenient options in the freezer at Costco and the major grocery stores that you can use that are also very quick and easy. Um, the eggs, and then also uh, anytime you can work towards more free range or grass fed meats, I recognize that that's an expense for a lot of people, but there will be more um, healthy omega-3 fats in those varieties. When you look at the blue zones, um, we touched on this last year um, at this conference, um, the longest living populations are really eating a plant-based diet. It's not to say that you have to forgo meat, it's just that we just want to boost and have a little bit more of a plant approach in the typical American uh, diet. And then what do we do when, about the fats? You know, in the 1980s, fat was bad. As you can see in the documentary today, sugar's bad. <laughs> so, I mean, we just can't win, right? But um, a lot of times, again, it's to look at, well, what's the whole picture? And so when it comes to fat, you know, what types of fat are you eating? And so there's actually more of a movement right now to add more healthy fats to our diets. It helps us to feel fuller. We don't need to worry about gaining weight as long as we're still eating a balanced approach for our metabolic needs. Um, and so I actually add nuts and seeds to all of the salads in our family's household. We use a lot of avocado. Um, and then when it comes to oils, the main thing here when you're thinking about detoxification is if you smoke your oils, if you overheat them, they create something called acrylamides. Well, these are toxins. And so the key here is that you want to match your oils for their smoke point. Eatingwell.com just released a really nice overview of all different cooking oils on their website that you can access for free. Um, and really what it does is it's that when you're using high heat cooking, are you using a high heat oil? Um, olive oil is fantastic, it's one of the basis of the Mediterranean diets, but it's not meant to be heated at a very high level. It's really meant as a finishing or a low heat cooking oil. So for high heat, you know, you can use avocado oil, you can use um, coconut oil if you're looking for a little bit of that coconut flavor. Um, you can use a lot of these, um, even like an organic canola oil that is non-GMO, that can be heated up pretty um, a lot higher than olive oil. So there's a lot of different options to match to the different dishes that you're wanting to prepare. And so then the next step in this pure sequencing is the R. How do we reduce our toxic exposures? Now, if you are up for um, the 10-day sugar-free challenge after you watch this lovely documentary, that is actually very hard to do. <laughs> I did it in May. 
um, trying to support my mother, actually. She watched just the trailer and she said, I signed up, I'm doing it. I said, wait a minute, I haven't even watched the movie yet. And now, you know, I joined in with her. And it was really hard. The 600,000 products on the shelves, 80% have added sugar. It was hard to do. But let me tell you, even if one small strategy comes out of it, I no longer need sugar in my coffee in the morning. And that stuck. So if any little shift that you can make, if you want to take on a challenge, see it as, well, what's one piece of this that I can actually sustain? You may not be able to sustain all of it, but again, any um, improvement is going to add up over time. And so this is a picture of Vani Hari. How many of you have heard of the food babe? She is very interesting. She is a 34-year-old woman who had some chronic health concerns, and she is taking on the big food companies. She's researching what these kind of mysterious ingredients are that are listed on the label. She's highlighting what they actually consist of, and she's actually um, getting petitions signed, and these companies are taking some of these additives out. So you can like her on Facebook if you're interested in her approach. She's definitely going to be a little bit further, uh, a little bit more progressive. Um, but I actually enjoy reading what she has to say. And so, um, you know, in Europe, the colorants they use in their food supply are all food-based. I don't understand why that's not the case in this nation. Yes? What, what's her name again? Vani Hari. H-A-R-I is the last name. Vani is V-A-N-I, and she, AKA the food babe. <laughs> yeah, food babe is all you need to, is, is to um, search that. And she'll send you updates, and she'll send out some different perspectives. And so if you're up for the, the um, fed up challenge, they actually have really nice emails that will come to you over the 10 day period. They will highlight the different 56 names that they can use for sugar on the label. It's a great educational path. And so um, they'll show you how yogurt sometimes can be the same as a fruit gusher. <laughs> and so it's great um, information. It's, it's just more tools, like in the toolkit that we can use to eat better. Another brand new resource that was released just two weeks ago is the Environmental Working Group's Food Scores. So if you have a smartphone, this is a fantastic app where you can go into the grocery store, you scan the barcode, and it will give you a um, score of the food product based on the nutrition, the ingredients, and the level of processing. So this is really nice at the point of purchase where you're kind of like, well, you know, I still want to have some crackers in the house. I still want to have some of my treats. But I want to choose a little bit healthier version. You know, is this bar good? Is that bar better? And so this actually will help you determine which ones are slightly better than others. Another app that I really enjoy that's very similar by a dietitian is called Fujucate. And again, this is all on this resource handout that you can pick up at the end of today. Um, Fujucate is like educate all around food. And you can scan and she'll actually give you healthy alternatives um, in the grocery store as well. The Center for Science and the Public Interest has uh, other resources online as well, and they have a um, chemical cuisine article, and it's a guide to food additives. So I've had some clients that actually just cut out the avoid part of their list and just kind of focus on, well, what are the key preservatives, chemicals that I want to make sure that I stay away from? And they just focus on that. And so, or they just kind of spot check a few of the things that are relatively safe or, you know, um, not as concerning as uh, the avoid list. In regards to the concern around organic produce and the costs, the number one goal is that you're eating the produce. I've had clients that, that forego eating any produce if they can't buy it organically. And that, I think, is missing the mark. The main thing you want to do is you want to base your diet on these really nutrient-dense plant foods. If you can afford some of them organically, great. If you can't, I still want you to eat them. Now, if you want to be strategic in how you spend your grocery dollars, you can focus on just the dirty dozen. The Environmental Working Group looks at the pesticide residues every single year. They release this every single year. And these are the top 12 that are going to have the most pesticides on them. So if I can, I will buy these organically, and then the rest, I buy conventional to save money. And so again, this is the Environmental Working Group. 
And you know, a lot of these are going to be the greens, the berries, you know, those the soft flesh uh, fruits that are going to absorb those um, pesticides easier. And lastly, the concern around uh, mercury in some of the fish, and you know, we've all told, you know, eat more fish, seafood, you know, but I'm concerned about the mercury, especially for my clients who are pregnant. Um, the Monterey Bay Aquarium actually has an app as well that helps you choose the um, healthiest sources of seafood and fish that are going to have the least amount of mercury as well. And so lastly, as part of the this pure sequencing is to just ensure that you're taking a safe approach. And so you want to really look at whole foods. If you're having to give up entire categories, that might be a red flag because as you can see, the detoxification process needs a well-balanced diet. You need carbohydrates, you need proteins, even healthy fats. The fats are gonna be key just to help you absorb some of those um, fat-soluble vitamins and nutrients. So you wanna use caution. A lot of uh, these natural remedies are not regulated by the FDA, so I just encourage you to work with a well-informed practitioner that can help you weigh the costs and the benefits and make sure that you're safe based on your own health history and your medications, uh, your health goals. And so really in closing, I encourage you to kind of think about, well, how do I establish a clean eating perspective? How do I base my general dietary rhythm on whole foods? One ingredient, <laughs> that's the take home message. The more items that you can eat that are one ingredient, the better off you'll be. Um, and check out our farmer's market, it's still going. It's going through the end of the year. It's, uh, we've got some flyers in your packets. We encourage you to check out the Maple Grove Farmer's Market that's held right here on this location every Thursday. Um, they have fantastic purple cauliflower, really colorful produce you may not be able to find anywhere else. It's also going to be locally grown, so it's going to have a lot more of those nutrients that have not had the time of transportation and degradation. And then how do you slowly reduce your reliance on processed foods? I highlighted several different tools, different techniques. You can really choose one and just start there and slowly build upon that over time. And so in essence, I encourage you to, again, you know, regardless of what the newest diet book is that comes out, try to just really look at what are the key messages, how does this fit into my life? A lot of my clients are trying to fit their life into some kind of program, and so when I sit down with someone, it's more about, well, who are you? What does your life look like? What are your food preferences? What kind of time, what kind of budget do you have? And then let's take these key lessons and let's apply it more to what fits for you and really personalize this, because this is what's coming. In the world of nutrition, we're going to start looking at, again, the genetic um, influences. Certain people can detoxify better than others based on certain genetic uh, predispositions. Certain people will process different types of diet plans better than others. And so it really is going to go into more of a personalized approach, even more so, which I'm excited about. And so we really want you to listen to your body and figure out what's best for you. And in doing so, we can be zenful and balanced with a little bit of broccoli in our lives. <laughs> Thank you so much.